Hello again, everyone. In our last session discussing numbers, we could not get too comfortable just yet because there's one last obstacle, sort of, that was in our way, and that was the completeness axiom. Now, don't expect anything too thrilling. It's just a simple axiom about bounded sets. Mind you, that's going to take a little effort to understand, assuming your mind is not already too clouded with other distractions. You know, we should never tolerate room for error, even from fools, when we can come up with a good solution grounded in logic and able to be proven with the mathematical tools at our disposal. So we, we begin with that in this video. So kind of as a review of our last lesson, we said that the rationals apparently had one fatal issue that reared its ugly head almost immediately. And that is that even if Q is a rational number, there is no guarantee that the square root of Q will be anything rational, will, will be rational. And we saw that, the, the classic example we saw was with the square root of two, didn't we? And this is important, so let me repeat it in case you missed it. If Q is a rational number, there may be no rational X, for example, such that X squared equals Q. It's as though the rational numbers have their limits. Interesting. Now we do, we want to include rational numbers, like uh, irrational numbers, sorry, irrational numbers, like the square root of two in our set of real numbers. And it seems simple, right? After all, the square root of two is just sitting there begging to be part of the real numbers. But of course, if we're going to include the square root of two, we may as well include all the other irrational numbers as well. We could try some half-baked solution, like saying, let's just add all the square roots of rational numbers to our set. But as usual, that will get you nowhere. Most irrational numbers are not even in the form of square root of Q, where Q is rational. It's the same kind of uh, lazy thinking that has plagued many misguided souls. Sometimes you have to really sit down and come, with, uh, come up with a clever solution. You have to think more about things in life. So what do we do in this situation then? We need a proper methodical approach that ensures that we capture, if I may use that word, every irrational number. And more importantly, that we can order them like the well-behaved objects they should be and are. So it's about time we got this mess sorted out. We will use the rationals, of course. What else can we use? They are really like the building blocks in some ways of our real number system. But instead of just picking random irrational numbers out of thin air, we have to be intelligent about this issue. And math is about building. I want you all to know this. If you're new to the channel and you are getting interested in mathematics and you are perhaps you are considering a math major, uh, I hopefully pure mathematics, not this applied nonsense. Math is about building in some ways. And in some ways, mathematicians are pioneers, just like our great ancestors who built this country rather than the lazy, good for nothings we have in so many places today who dishonor their ancestors and our country. Some of you are still looking to the politicians for your answers rather than to God and truth. That's why so many of our young men and women are, in many cases, aimless wanderers today. Instead of being grounded in a foundation of truth and an uncompromising spirit of conquest and discovery. So if we're going to take the square root of two as an example, for instance, let's have a look at that example. And I'm going to show you on the board a set, a, an expression that I think you might find perhaps maybe not beautiful, but interesting. And it's going to be the first step in our journey today. It's neat. 
it's controlled and it's it's very easy to uh, plug into a definition. Um, so we're ready to proceed to the next stage of our plan. Uh, but so there's a lot to come. Hopefully I can do a lot in this video because I was able to squeeze in some time this afternoon. So here's a clever way of going about this. If we have the set A, and X is an element of the rational numbers, where our restriction here is X squared is less than 2. Notice if you graph that, what the graph looks like. And you derive some important principles from that. The first principle, of course, is that the set is bounded above, we say. So in other words, 2, 6, and even 1.5 are all bigger than everything in the set in set A. So these are the what we call the upper bounds on A. The next thing to consider is there is one special upper bound, and the smallest of them all, which is in fact exactly what you would have guessed, the square root of 2. And we already said that is not a rational number. And the third principle is that in order to get all of the real numbers, we must start with Q and then add in all the least upper bounds from all sets that are bounded above like A. And that is we include the square root of 2 into our set of real numbers. And if you do this for all such A, you will make the reals complete. But what does that look like formally? I do want you to see the formal definition. This is sort of our, our plan. But what would that look like formally? Well, and so here is our definition. There's two more parts to it. Uh, I just wanted you to begin to see this one. Let this sink in for a moment. Read. I'm not going to read it out loud, of course. I, I think you could read it. You could pause the video, read it. Let it sink in. And there are two more principles to discuss. So these were the last two uh, principles here. We had a total of five principles. And there are some interesting principles that you can derive from these five principles. The first one is, notice that the set of, by the way, the N, I didn't write it out in the Sometimes it's, it's hard to get the symbol. I mean the natural numbers, the set of the natural numbers. Notice it has no upper bounds. And the lower bounds on N, however, include, uh, you know, negative 17, 1, uh, 0 0.123, and even negative pi. Notice that the soup or the sup right, and does not exist. Reminds me of that horrible expression that some people use they, they, when they try to greet you. They say, sup. Don't you sup me. And then you have the INF, which equals one. The set Q has no upper bounds, the, the, the rational numbers, no upper bounds or lower bounds. And therefore, the sup and inf do not exist. And also, when you have 1 over n, and n, of course, being an element of the natural numbers, that is equal to 1. And the inf is equal to 0. But we have more to say. I want to add to this a few things. Now, we're not proving this just yet because I want to lead into you into a theorem. I've added a couple more here that you can look at. And finally, we get to our axiom, the axiom of completeness. By the way, if you want an alternative definition, I recommend uh, Modern Introductory Analysis by Dolciani. 
in her book, uh, the ni- at least the 1960s edition, the axiom of completeness is defined in a sentence. Every bounded, non-decreasing sequence of real numbers is said to converge, converges, and its limit is a real number. That's a different way you can look at it. So this definition, by the way, only explicitly guarantees the existence of least upper bounds. However, as a corollary, you can prove the existence of greatest lower bounds. So one way to look at this is, and at last, we have reached the big, big idea. We are talking about the reals, the real numbers. So really the reals are what you get when you start with the rationals with Q and then add in just enough numbers so that it satisfies the least upper bound property that you have. And this is called completing Q and hence the name of the theorem. So that's going to be our next video. We're going to talk about uh, a little bit more in depth of the real numbers and other properties. I hope that this was helpful to you. And if it was, please continue to subscribe and support the channel. God bless you all. And thank you for your support. As always, uh, I'm always very blessed when I read the majority of your comments are very, very positive and your feedback. Thank you all.